October 4th, 1957. What does that mean to you if you're the average person? It doesn't mean a doggone thing. And Roosevelt, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, something big happened on October 4th, 1957, and it touched off a whole kaboom of development, political angst, worry, uh, rivalry. Well, guess what happened yesterday, January 27th of 2025. I think we had a similar moment to that of October 4th, 1957. Let's get into it. A very good morning to you. People have been enjoying these commentaries on News of the Day and some of my reactions to uh, News of the Day and also trying to get a little bit out on the bow of the ship here uh, of Western civilization and see what may lie ahead. Well, let's let's uh, just say also, if you're not subscribed, it's a great time to subscribe and hit the bell for more notifications. You get a little food for thought, too, to think about. Maybe some things that you haven't thought about before. On October 4th of 1957 in the evening, the Soviet Union launched the very first satellite into space. It was called the Sputnik. The Sputnik. Uh, I laugh because we have a weight in crabbing and fishing that's called a Sputnik. It's like a lead ball with four little feet, that, uh, four long wires that come out of the back of it. And people just named it the Sputnik or whatever. But that day's events were were it was cataclysmic in nature because all of a sudden the united states had, we had assumed for years that the soviet union was kind of backwards when it came to technology rocket technology satellites and things like that and lo and bold uh, hey frankie what's that thing in the sky uh i think that's a satellite oh we did that great no i think that's uh the the, the commies did <laughs> the commies did it and people absolutely freaked out in this uh, nation because we suddenly realized, well, we may not always be the lead sled dog in the race, right? And then that really is the thing that touched off the uh, race for the moon landing, which was to happen in July of 1969. So a lot of ground was covered in a short period of time. But it was what we could really call a wake-up call. For America. Well, yesterday we had what I think might go down as a similar wake up call. Over the last two years or so, we've been hearing a lot about AI, artificial intelligence, and uh, how great it is to power. Use all the artificial intelligence, all the knowledge base of the world to answer questions, to do advanced calculations, uh, you know, to rule the world or whatever <laughs> using AI. And really, NVIDIA Corporation has really been on the frontier of it with their own uh, really fantastic top flight uh, computer chips. And they're very expensive and very proprietary, not to mention that AI, uh, as it's envisioned in the American model, uses a lot of energy, right? So they're always talking about how AI could stress the grid in all the places like Texas and all these other places. It could be very costly in terms of energy consumption and all that right so companies like constellation energy group uh back on the east coast they've been trying to work to start three mile island anybody that's my age their hair stands on that when they hear three mile island which was run by general public utilities and it's it really had the first um first threatened meltdown of any uh, nuclear reactor. And it was very hair raising up in Pennsylvania uh, there, but they were all excited licking their chops and quite a few energy companies because it's going to be a chance to make a fortune supply in these high energy needs. Well, right, you got a uh, an AI industry, you got these computer chip manufacturers, the manufacturers salivating it's selling these expensive chips and you've got these energy companies that are all poised to invest i mean one of these we just talked the other day president trump had three uh softbank and a couple other companies getting together and saying we're going to invest half a trillion dollars into ai right it's going to be the greatest thing from sliced bread and then this morning kaboom right the news came out 
The China Deep Seek, they have a company that's called Deep Seek. And for like a few million dollars, they were able to take these these lower generation computer chips because they can't get their hands on the uh, because of export controls. They can't get their hands on the uh, the chips from the video because they're controlled. But using these these cheaper these cheaper chips, they were able to duplicate basically what uh, our boys are shoveling billions of billions of dollars into this, and all of a sudden it was like a Sputnik moment. Like what? <laughs> what they did what with six million bucks they were able to produce this deep seek that is uh can do everything that our op chat gbt and all these other ai things because you gotta be kidding you're bullshitting me right <laughs> no they weren't bullshitting and yesterday it was really amazing to see the dramatic fall out of uh nvidia lose almost 600 billion dollars of market cap 600 billion dollars which means well i'll put i'll put 600 billion into perspective and value wiped out there's only 13 companies whose capitalization on the new york stock exchange or the nasdaq stock exchange equals 600 billion dollars so that's a lot of money that was wiped out yesterday right and as a knock-on effect right the energy companies like constellation energy group they kept they crater too because all of a sudden with super low energy needs right this chinese model was able to accomplish what these guys are shoveling billions of dollars of coal into the furnace to do the same thing and this chinese deep seek model is doing it for the fraction of the cost so will this be like the black swan moment it really kind of signals the end of dominance of technology here we don't know it's similar to the same thing with the soviet union in 1957 you know a lot of people's hair was standing on end today and the chairman of nvidia here was quick to come out and say no no this is uh that that's kind of different they're going to need a lot of our chips to do to do this or do that i don't think the market was buying it today <laughs> I don't, if, you, if you ask me now we don't know what tomorrow brings but the assumption was that there was a big gap between our efforts in artificial intelligence and what other nations particularly china were able to do and all of a sudden with a lot less money boom caught right up here with uh with america with well didn't even seem to be hurt by the uh, chip uh, the export controls on the best uh, chip so just goes to show you you never know and we don't know what's going to happen to the whole the whole deal of the uh, ai because see deep seek does one more thing too it's an open source open source ai meaning uh, that anybody can come along and get the certain basic uh, the basic codes and things and then build their own bolt on their own applications and things to it right build their own tinker toy with all the <laughs> right? with all the things that they want on it and you know the open source allows people to just build in multiple directions multiple countries and really expand and use it right so in other words it's not proprietary it's not it's not secret to us so therefore it just opens up the platform it's like a wild just opened up the wild west for a land grab so people can go out there and use this open source for what for free right? and build up their own build up their own ai applications Will January 27th of 2025 go down in history as sort of a Sputnik moment? Well, in my mind, I think the answer might be yes. Of course, we expect a bounce back. And now, you know, there'll be the PR departments are out there. Hey, get out there and you know, get in front of it. And we got this behind this curtain. We haven't shown you yet. And all those kind of things. But one of the things I contended two years ago that I said, and many of you will remember when AI was just bursting on the scene, I said, a little AI goes a long way, right?
and you're probably not going to need all this massive infrastructure and things. It's probably going to be a very cheap thing that could be very powerful at the end. It's not going to cost any real money to use. Therefore, there's not going to be a lot of money made in it except on the application side. But we shall see. As Ed Hart of the old Financial News Network used to say, that famous financial analyst we will know in the fullness of time. But anyway, we shall see. What the, did we just cross a black swan moment, the Waterloo moment? Cross the Rubicon? I don't know. We will see, but it's very interesting. Anyway, because you'll hear a lot of comparisons to that over the next couple of days. So if you're not subscribed, it's a great time once again just to hit subscribe and hit that bell for all notifications. We kind of like to take the Tom Complex and break it down into a uh, simple form. And when you see this today, I'm going crab it today, right? I'm going to be using Sputnik weights <laughs> on the end of my crab snares today. Anyway, guys, that'll, that'll be coming up. Uh, for tomorrow but thank you so much for watching love to welcome you to the uh, channel we're going to stay ahead of the curve we're not going to follow behind here okay thanks for watching everybody thumbs up are appreciated